dance in trance. They arrive back home in high spirits from the evening's entertainment. Suzanne had taken Charles to an African restaurant called Black to Africa, where they ate pounded yam, a goosey stew, jollof rice and other African delicacies while watching the African bands play live. The djembe drumming, African dancing, kora playing and singing had gone straight to the core of their beings, reminding them of their roots. They had bought the band's CD and played it all the way back home, and by now, Suzanne is beginning to feel something awakening that had been buried deep within her DNA. Removing their shoes at the front door, they make their way to the master bedroom. Suzanne puts the CD in the stereo and presses the play button before lighting some candles. Meanwhile, Charles takes off his dashiki and chinos and sits on the bed watching as Suzanne enters her walk-in wardrobe again. He knows her well enough by now to anticipate a treat. He thinks that perhaps she will reappear in some sexy lingerie, so isn't mentally prepared for what he sees when she does finally re-emerge. Suzanne seems to have transformed herself into some sort of exotic dancer, sexual healer, temple priestess. She's wearing a white see-through flowy dress thing which plunges into a V-shape at the neckline right down to her navel. It's elasticated at the waist with long flowing bell sleeves. The skirting drops in multiple folds down to her ankles. Charles can see right through it and she isn't wearing anything underneath. Her nipples protrude through the sheer material demanding his attention. Around her forehead, she's wearing a gold chain with various symbols hanging from it. He'd never seen it before. She's barefooted, showing off her freshly manicured feet. She begins moving her body to the beat of the drums as something within her takes over. She twists and twirls, gyrating her hips in a sensual, sexual manner as she sends forth her inner womb message. The whole atmosphere in the room changes. Charles is aroused, moved almost to tears and concerned all at the same time. The look on Suzanne's face is unlike anything he's seen before. She isn't focused on him. She appears to be in a trance-like state, totally caught up in the moment. The elongated shadows on the wall behind her, created by the candlelight, look like spirits dancing along with her. Perhaps she's invoking the spirits of her ancestors. Or is it the Holy Spirit? He can't tell. All he knows is it's a force of love. He feels at peace as he watches her. Where did she learn to dance like that? He wonders. When Suzanne finishes, she gracefully walks towards the bed where Charles is lying propped up on one elbow. Is there no end to your talents? he asks in awe. I can do whatever I put my mind to, she replies as she sits next to him. He watches intently as she comes back to herself. They sit in silence for a few moments. Charles looks in deep thought before asking, If there was anywhere in the world that you could go, where would it be? Without having to think about it, Suzanne responds, Africa, my motherland. Africa's a big place, which part? She pauses to think before replying, Egypt. Charles ponders as if in agreement, then tracing a finger over the lump where her nipple is still protruding through the dress, he asks, can I take this off now? She stands and raises her arms so he can lift off the dress easily. Noticing the music has stopped, he walks over to the stereo, starts the CD again from the beginning and turns it up loud. He removes his boxers and socks as he makes his way back to the bed. Both of them are now bursting with passion. That night, when they make love, it's as if all the heavens, God, The angels and their ancestors are all watching and cheering them on. It feels like nothing they had ever experienced before. Suzanne cries from the bottom of her heart 
and afterwards Charles clings on to her, remaining inside her long after he had ejaculated, as if not wanting to break the newly created bond between them. 